Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Waldorf Inspired Roots. In today's video, I'm going to share some of the amazing curriculum choices and resources that I found for my son's high school chemistry main lesson block. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I would love to hear comments and feedback in the comment section below. share with you today are the two resources that I'll be using as our main curriculum and the very first one is beginning chemistry and the scientific method unit study for grades five to eight and it is by the good and the beautiful and I will link them below over the years we have discovered that we absolutely love the good and the beautiful's uh, science main lesson blocks and they have quite a few, I, I don't know the exact number, but there are uh, main lesson block, or un, they call them unit studies. Um, with our homeschool, we are Waldorf inspired, so I call them main lesson blocks. But for our main lesson blocks, we have you know used their science uh, unit studies as like our base. And even though it says that it's technically for grades five to eight, we are going to use other resources and a, uh, one, the one other curriculum that was here in the beginning uh, that I'll tell you about in a minute. And the, those will be the things that we use to supplement to turn this into a high school chemistry course, but this will be the main curriculum that we use. Now, um, like I said, I will link them below and they have subjects for a lot of things. Actually, my very next video is going to be geology um, and we use the good and the beautiful for that also. So look forward to that one. Um, but I do want to show you when you order, you can order, um, in two different ways. You can either get the printed copy and when you order the printed copy, you also will get a link for the PDF. Um, in case there's things that you want to print additional later, like some of the worksheets or things like that. But, um, or you can just get the PDF and print it you know, yourself at home. Now, for me personally, I've done it both ways, um, but I have discovered that I really like their printed copies and some of their subjects, we have used them for history in the past. We have used them for um, several, several other things. Some of their handwriting things are typically in my son's morning basket. So we use the good and the beautiful for a variety of things, but um, and some of them come spiral bound and some of them come loose leaf. So this came, uh, you know, shrink wrapped or, or whatnot, and it was loose. And so I three hole punched it myself and we put it in, you know, the, uh, the three ring binder. Now I like, um, I'll just kind of flip through to a couple of the pages just really quick, but I like the texture of the pages is a little thicker and it's like a, a glossier version than what we typically use in our printer and it the ink is really nice and the pictures are really vibrant and nice much more so than when we print them ourselves but really it could be fine either way um, and it, it is cheaper if you just do the PDF than you know if you have it sent to you but uh, I personally prefer uh, just to get the printed. Um, but anyway, so I will read through the table of contents so you know what this main lesson block or unit study is going to cover with um, the good and the beautiful specifically. So in the beginning, you'll have the unit information, then it goes through and it tells you the supplies needed. Um, and I'll cover that in just a minute, but I, I actually want to go over that page because it's pretty spectacular. They have optional read alouds, vocabulary, and then it gets into the lessons. We have um, lesson one is introduction to chemistry. Then we have the scientific method, scientific measurement, states of matter, phase transitions, elements, atoms, and molecules, chemical and physical properties, identifying chemical changes, elements and the periodic table, the atom, molecules, compounds, and chemical bonding, conservation of mass, mixtures and pure substances, properties of water, 
and then we have featured elements. So the first thing that I want to share or show you is the unit information. Now, they give you ideas for a science journal for all of their unit studies that they offer. Um, so this just tells you about the journal, uh, their recommendations on um, preparing a one inch to two inch three ring binder, um, you know, having tab dividers. So it kind of tells you how to set that up if you want to utilize that. They also have a science wall. So they have their vocabulary words and um, it says cut out the vocabulary wall cards at the beginning of the unit. So uh, we cut them out and we put them all on the wall. And I think in here they actually have you put a couple up with each lesson. We put them all up that way they are there and you know visible all throughout our day and and throughout our main lesson block and then when we get to the ones that they would have us put up each lesson that's when we would read them and discuss them and, and go over them but they're up all the time. So then they have lesson mini books and they're in here and it tells you how to put them together and what they are and then it uh, if it has the scissor symbol that's the lesson preparation and it's like the directions. And when you see a magnifying glass, it's for teaching older children. Now this unit study is designed for grades five to eight. And so it has, if you are teaching older children in grades seven and eight, um, you know, look for the magnifying glass for additional um, uh, less or, you know, lesson extensions or whatnot for the older uh, students. But a lot of their science is set up for K through eight or K through six, and then it'll have the lesson extent extensions for grades seven and eight in those as well. So all of their units, most of their units can be used for, uh, if you're teaching multiple ages, it's wonderful because it has things that, um, you know, you can tailor things for multiple ages. And when you're doing a homeschool, oftentimes you, not everyone has just one student that they're teaching one thing to. And so, um, it's really great to have the ability to teach one thing to everybody, but in age appropriate ways. So uh, I love it for that. And actually we've used this in our co-op and within our co-op, there are kids from kindergarten all the way up through high school. So I think that's why we started using this because it's so easily tailorable for all age groups. And okay, so here's the next thing I wanna show you about this that I absolutely love. It is, um, for this is the supplies needed page. For every lesson, it tells you exactly what you're gonna need. So, and I also love that with most of their uh, unit studies, most of the things that you need are things that you probably already have with the exception of maybe a handful of things that you may have to go and pick up. But most of them are things that um, if you have kids and if you live in a house, you probably have these things. So I'm gonna just give you some of the examples. A bowl or basket, white coffee filters, um, a ballpoint pen, uh, uh, cups, and any kind of water, a permanent black marker, five colors of washable markers, including black and brown. Uh, we have all of those things. Most people I think do. But uh, some of the other things, um, it talks about optional. Uh, graduated cylinders and beakers and so I did go ahead and pick up a set of these and I actually got these at Lakeshore again I will link it below and it came with a set of seven of them and uh, this is the the last one that is humongous and then these ones so I did pick these up I believe it was only like twenty dollars for the seven um, so that is an additional resource that I decided to go ahead and pick up. And the reason why I decided that is because for this, I, I believe I saw that there were several that said you could use that as an optional resource. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll go ahead and get that. So I just wanted to show you most of these things you probably already have. And then the other thing that I went ahead and picked up are one of them called for magnets. I think they specifically said a block magnet if you have it, but any magnet will do. And we had some from the preschool. So I just went ahead and put these in for his unit. And then it calls for a candy thermometer um, or you know any, any other thermometer. And we had these from a previous science unit that I had picked up for some things that we were doing. Um, so, you know, thermometers, you can probably pick up these metal ones, which will work perfect for some of the lessons that are in this for pretty cheap on Amazon. I will try to find them and link it below. I also went ahead and picked up pipettes and we already had goggles, so I included that just so you could see that there are a few things that 
you may not already have, but they would probably be pretty inexpensive to add as a, as a you know supplement or, or a supply. Um, okay, so uh, it does go into optional read alouds. It'll tell the lesson and what the optional read aloud is. And I love that they break it up. If it has an F, it's fiction, NF, nonfiction, B, biography. K to six indicates the interest level of the book from kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, and so, I mean, as you go through, it's an easy way to kind of get an idea of the age appropriateness of each of these, depending on the ages that you're teaching. Now here are the vocabulary lists. So we would just go ahead and cut these out and hang them on our science wall. I, I believe there's several pages of these. And then when we get to lesson one, um, so it has the preparation section here and all of their things are set up with little check boxes. So as you go through and do each thing, you can check it off so you know that you've done it. And then it talks about all the supplies needed for this unit. And then we have the optional read aloud here. And then it tells uh, another section of what to read to the kids. It goes into the vocabulary words and then another section to read. And then it has the activity another activity, uh, an additional activity, and these are chemistry questions, uh, talking about things in history pertaining to chemistry, uh, more vocabulary words, and then we get into the experiment. And this one in particular is about chromatography, and it tells you how to do it and different things to read to the kids about what this is, uh, different questions. So the, ne the last activity is a quote discussion, and it is discussing um, this quote here, and then there's a summary which talks about what they learned. Um, in the beginning, there was a part that said chemistry questions. So it would have told us, if, if we had read it, to refer to the, um, you know, this page. And so here are the questions. It looks like they are uh, to be cut out. And then we've got important people in chemistry. And so one of the activities pertain to that. And so it would have referred you to these. And it looks like these are like flashcards. Um, or possibly a game or you know something um, that you cut out and use that way. And then lesson one, chromatography experiment. This is the page you would fill out as you were doing the experiment and it talks about the hypotheses and, um, and then we've got the experiment, notes to take during that, the results, um, write down any thoughts or ideas you uh, have that could explain your results. And then we have um, the in experiment instructions. And then we would move on to lesson two. So all of their things are kind of set up that same way. This one happens to have a mini book. They don't all have a mini book, um, but we just love them. Now I'm not gonna just flip through so that you can see some of the other things, some of the other pages. There is a lot in here. Now, like I said, this is technically for grades five to eight. So to supplement this, to make it a high school unit, um, I picked up a book that we actually use several of these this upcoming school year. I believe we have three of these that we're gonna be using. So um, this is the high, the complete high school study guide, everything you need to ace chemistry in one big, big fat notebook. Now we, like I said, we have the, this series of books for several of our subjects. I absolutely love them. They kind of take out a lot of the fluff. And so it is um, a good way to get all of the pertinent information that would be on any uh, big test, like when he's ready to do SATs or ACTs, if he decides to go to college or the ASVAB, if he goes to the military or, I mean, any any of the above, this would definitely prepare him for that. Um, but my son learns more through audit auditory and, um, you know, uh, doing uh, kinesthetic and um, seeing, touching, feeling, and then some, uh, you know, to a degree visual also. But He's not a, he doesn't love um, reading and writing a great deal, uh, although he is improving <laughs> in those areas, but they're not his favorite um, subjects or areas. And so anytime he has to read through just reading a textbook, he is probably not gonna get much from that. So that's why I love the Waldorf um, philosophy and that it pulls from so many different um, you know, er ways of learning 
uh, and learning styles so that you can really incorporate all of those things to really help your child to learn the best way for them. So um, let me flip through this. So everything in yellow are vocabulary words and they don't actually show what it means if they're in green, but if they're in green, I believe it's definitions. Um, blue ink are uh, related terms and concepts. They're written in blue ink. Um, so <clears throat> the contents in this book include basics of chemistry, um, all about matter, uh, atomic theory and electron configuration, elements and the periodic table, bonding, I'm not sure how to say that. I'll have to look that up. Is it Vesper theory? Um, possibly. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Um, so I apologize for that. But um, chemical compounds, chemical reactions and calculations, gases, solutions and solubility, acids and bases, chemical compounds, thermodynamics. And that is all. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of walk you through um, the first chapter so you can see how it's set up and then I'll just flip through. So introduction to chemistry, um, it does have, like I said, yellow or vocab words, and then the definition is in green. Um, and then, so they have it set up to where there is plenty of information, but it is a very easy read. It's very easy to get through. There's color, it keeps you engaged. They, they even tell jokes or, or have random things in here and then they've got their little images just to really kind of make it fun, which really helps for, especially for a child who doesn't necessarily love to read. But even if you have a child who absolutely loves to read, this is a fun read. So, um, it's, you know, so here's more examples of that. And then here we have, you know, something in blue. And so, um, what did they say that was? I forget. Um, so it's terms and concepts. So this would be a term or a concept, more vocab words. Now at the very end of the, um, each chapter, they are going to have a section called check your knowledge and it's going to have some questions. And then on the reverse side, it's going to have the answers. Um, now the way that we work this, we work on a mastery grading scale, so we don't move on from one thing until he's mastered the previous thing. And so I would orally ask him these questions and, you know, um, have him tell me the answers. Sometimes I believe in this book there are, you know, chemistry involves a lot of math. And so I think that there's actual problems and things that he'll have to work out. So some things he'll need paper and pencil to work out. But basically he needs to tell me the answers and as long as he's getting them correctly or or at least most of, you know, if he misses one out of seven, then we would just discuss it before we move on and make sure that, you know, he learns it. But overall, you know, as long as he's mastering this, then we would move on to the next section. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of flip through and just kind of show you. The whole book is set up the same way. Each unit has several chapters. And so the way that we're gonna use this book, as we're talking about things in his The Good and the Beautiful uh, Beginning Chemistry, we will reference whatever coordinates to that. And I actually looked through these beforehand and realized that it's pretty much in the same order. So the things that they teach in The Good and the Beautiful, um, they teach them almost, you know, almost on cue in this book and so it's going to be very easy for us to work through that you know work through the good and the beautiful and then also read some of this and go through some of these so um i think it's going to work perfectly now the next thing that i actually want to show you are um the additional resource books that i did go ahead and pick up this one is called real chemistry experiments 40 exciting steam activities for kids advanced concepts for ages eight to 12. Now my son is 15, he's going into 10th grade, but a lot of these are so fun. It's by Edward P. Zovinka, and he, uh, PhD. So now at the beginning of all of my books, uh, if you watched any of my other curriculum choice videos, you would have seen, I'm a post-it note fan, so at the beginning of each book, if you see a post-it note, it's just saying how I was planning to use this, um, you know, throughout the unit, just so I can remember when I get to it, since I plan it all pretty far in advance. Um, so the contents of this book, we have 
what is chemistry, how to use this book, experimenting with matter, experimenting with gases, experimenting with chemical reactions, experimenting with po uh, polymers, uh, and then putting it all together. And so there is just a ton of experiments. And so I will go through this. I've gone through a little bit, but I will go through and basically post-it note anywhere that I see something that will coordinate with something else that we're doing. Um, and it, it is color and the pictures are, are very nice. Um, and so I will post-it note this so I know which lesson it was going to go with, but then I will also post-it note in my main curriculum books so that it will refer me to this so I know that we have an additional activity that we were going to do with that lesson. Now the next thing I want to show you are actually a series of books that I just found. Uh, they are all by Theodore Gray and they are real photographs of the elements and this is a visual exploration of every known atom in the in the universe. This uh, sequel to that are, is Molecules, the elements and the architecture of everything. And the next one is Reactions, an illustrated exploration of elements, molecules, and change in the uni universe. Sorry. So um, I am going to just flip through these, but we will use these as a reference. The illustrations in these are just amazing. Um, they are gorgeous. Look at that. This is hydrogen. We have helium, lithium, uh, beryllium, boron, carbon. So as you can see, nitrogen, the, the illustrations are fantastic. I, uh, I haven't seen anything quite like this for, um, for this. And so when I picked these up, I was just uh, so excited to find this. So this is gonna be amazing as we're talking about different things throughout this unit to be able to go through and um, reference and see them in this detail. Um, so the Molecules book is similar, uh, similar that I mean the photos are absolutely amazing, but then it also has, um, you know, the, the diagram here. Um, but yeah, again, well, and I love that it, it shows the diagram and then it shows the actual thing and also shows how it's used, um, you know, in real life. So this is going to be fun. Now, the reason why this is going to be fun before I move on to the, uh, to the next one is I have actually also picked up this. This is Old Nobby Molecular Kit. And in this kit, there's 239 pieces. I may go ahead and pick up, they have larger sets that actually have more of the um, colored pieces that represent different elements. Um, but when you open it up, it has a booklet that shows you how to make different um, molecules from the different elements. Um, and then here's what you get. You get all these little connector pieces and then you get all these different colors. Each color represents a different element, and when you put them together, it creates the molecules, and so we've got all those there. Now, I did already put one together. I had fun playing around with it before um, filming this video, but I made caffeine. So this is the molecule for caffeine, and uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. I think my son is gonna really enjoy this. Uh, they do have larger sets than the one that I got. I believe the one that I got was $20 or maybe it was like $24. Uh, but they have sets that go all the way up to like $50 and they have, um, I don't even know how many, but so many more um, elements than even what came in mine. And so I may go ahead and pick uh, one of those up, but I will link several of those sets below so that you can pick which one, you know, who, you know, you prefer. Um, but I love that they have the, um, you know, the diagram or whatever here so that we can go ahead and build those with our um, molecular kit. And so I'll just kind of flip through quickly to show you some of the other pictures. Oh, wow. See, that is just so detailed. Absolutely amazing. Some of these chains get quite large. <laughs> um, so there you have it. Now, <clears throat> The last book 
is called Reactions. So as you can see, again, the pictures are just fantastic. Simply incredible um, how detailed these are. Hopefully they're showing up on the camera as well as they are in person, probably not. I don't think anything ever comes through quite as well on camera as it is in person, but it's just fantastic. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna show you is actually a game, and it is Chemistry Flux. So I picked this up, we have not played it yet, so I'm not quite sure how to play. Uh, there are instructions here, and um, we will learn. So here are some examples of the goal cards, and it just says uh, things that you um, need in your hand to win. This one says goggles required, Bunsen burner, and goggles. Uh, the next one sell says transition metals, any two of the following, iron, copper, silver. It smells like rotten eggs, hydrogen, and sulfur. So then we have keeper cards. We've got goggles, a lab coat, a Bunsen burner. So that's just some of them. Now the next deck are some more keeper cards. And then we've got share the wealth. And so these are action cards. And then we have new rule cards. I can do an update or maybe I'll have a video where my son and I play a round or two of this just to show you how it's played. It looks fun, sounds fun. Um, and it will teach chemistry along the way. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. So I hope you were able to find some new ideas and inspiration if you're planning a high school chemistry uh, unit study or main lesson block for your kids. Again, uh, this actually could work for any age. The, the good and the beautiful in particular uh, can work. It says grades um, five to eight, but uh, you could surely adapt some of these things for younger kids if you are teaching multiple ages again this is just a wonderful way and then supplemented with the um everything you need to ace book uh, i think that this is going to be an amazing main lesson block and we're really excited to get going on this so i hope you were able to find some things that you can use as well and i believe my next video is going to be um another science main lesson block and it is also going to be by the good and the beautiful and it will be covering geology. So I look forward to sharing that with you as well. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I would love to hear comments and feedback in the comment section below. Bye.